Do you know how to stay in the face of God? Because remember, the face of God is his face. This is his eyes. This is his uh, his ears. We got to think about this. This is his nose. This is his lips, his teeth, his eyes, uh, his mouth, his cheek, his forehead. Do you know how to stay in the face of God? Before you can know how to stay in his face, you have to think about it. His face, it can be ministered to. That's why Samuel was taught how to minister to God. That means to find out what his face wanted to experience. His face can be ministered to. Now, the major part of anyone's face is their eyes. The thing that take over your face the most is your eyes. The first thing that you mostly will notice on a person is their eyes. So the eyes is a major portal in which God views your life. Um, there's a text in the New Testament uh, or in Psalms, rather, more than one place. It talks about God looking down from the earth to see if there's anyone that seeks God, to see if there's anyone that understands. So, saints, think about this. Every single day, the Lord is watching over the earth to see if there's somebody that is hungry for him. That's what he's looking for. That person will be made rich. That person will be made healed. That person will be made the head and not the tail. Because this is a rare, this is a rarity. Now, number two, I want you to catch this. When God is looking down to the earth, Proverbs chapter 15, verse three says, the eye of the Lord looks to and fro the earth, watching over the good and evil. Another text says that the eye of the Lord is beholding, uh, is, is in every place beholding uh, the good and the evil. So look at this. It, it even tell you that God is watching people that go against his will. His eye is in every place. That means that there's no place on earth where his surveillance is not set up to watch. He's watching in every place. Now, saints, I want you to catch this. Uh, when you go to heaven, uh, you will find that there are some beasts there that have eyes all around them. Uh, you're aware of the four living creatures, all right? Because Ezekiel revealed that. But I want you to catch this. What's revealed in the Bible is not all that exists. And that's one thing that a lot of people miss. Um, Ezekiel's encounter is not the only encounter. <laughs> you know, so it, it, it's, it's kind of wild. Like, um, you, you could read the Bible from a point of view, like, this is all that exists. No, that's all that God chose to reveal. That's why the last book in the Bible is called Revelation. That means that these things had already existed but he chose to expose parts of it. So imagine what he chose not to expose. The Bible even said that there's a name written that Jesus has that no man knows about it. It's a secret. The Bible even says in Revelation that you have a different name in heaven. So Revelation is not all that exists. Revelation is what God chose to reveal to you. So the Bible is not the fullness of God. The Bible is what God chose to reveal. So, so there are realms of God that when, when he looks down on earth and he sees that you enter him, he says, come here. I got something for you. And when I give this to you, you're going to be one of a kind. When I share this with you, you're going to know something other people don't know. There are rewards when you're in the face of God that he trusts you with things that he don't trust nobody. And since he uh, specifies the incentives so that you could know how unique you are to him by even taking the time to seek his face. When you seek God's face, he will do things for you to show you 
your uniqueness, your specialty, your greatness. He will do things for you so that you can recognize how he responded to your seeking of his face. Now, saints, I want you, I want you to catch this. Seeking his face and serving his face is two different things. Because when you're seeking his face, you're after what he wants. You're pursuing the clue, the puzzle. You're pursuing the signals, the instruction, the introduction, the presentation. You're pursuing his dwelling place. But serving his face is different. Because when you're serving his face, now that means that you know what he wants. So now you can serve his face. Meaning that you could allow him to see the deeds that he desire. You allow him to hear the words he wants spoken. The Bible says something about Noah that God smelt his seed. So seed sowing is serving God's face. He smelled, he smelt Noah's honor. So when the seed went out of Noah's altar and Noah was honoring God with his seed, God's face was being served. There's a difference between seeking God and serving God. There's a difference between seeking his face and serving his face. Because when you're seeking his face, you become a student. You want to learn. When you're serving his face, you have learned. Do you know how to stay in the face of God? Because there's all type of things that he has spoken in the word that allows you to seek his face and serve his face. And there's another realm of satisfying his face. That means that you're no longer just serving, but this is who you have become. You're not going nowhere. This is your home. Worship is your residence. You are a residential true worshiper. When you satisfy his face, you're faithful. When you satisfy his face, that means that you're consistent. You're enduring. You're durable. You're eternal. You will never turn your back on him. There are people that satisfy, satisfies God's face. David satisfied God's face. Daniel satisfied God's faith face. That's why when they made a law for him to stop serving God's face, he still served. That's when you get into the realm of satisfying God's face because you never allow people or life in general to separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus. When you are satisfying his face, there is not an option inside of you of leaving his will. When you are satisfying God's face, there's not anything in you that desires anything that will hurt your God. You don't want anything that will make him feel bad. You just want to make him happy all day long. That's when you get into satisfying God's face. <laughs>